Irish fans, welcome to our first episode of 2024 of Wake Up the Echoes, presented by TireRack.com. I'm your special guest host for today. My name is Charlotte Lewis, and I'm a member of the Women's Basketball Program. I've been with the program since 2011, and I serve as our program manager and our in-game host. So if you ever attend a women's basketball game, you will see me on the court. We have an exciting show for you today. We have our own Olivia Miles, Maddie Westbell, and Devereaux Peters joining us. But first, let's welcome Coach Ivy to the show. Today I'm joined here with Head Coach Neil Ivy, and this is our first episode of 2024. So welcome. Yes. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. What did you do for your New Year's Eve celebration? How did you bring in the New Year? I go to sleep. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> But I'm excited for the new year. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. We're excited just looking ahead and forward to all of our games and UConn is coming up, all of that stuff. But um, I wanted to tap in a little bit and talk about having Sony back on the court. Yes. Uh, how does that feel? It feels great. Um, I'm so proud of her. She put in a lot of work to come back to our team. Yeah. Um, it was obviously a freak accident, so unfortunate out for like seven, eight weeks. And just to have her presence and her poise, her experience has been just a light and a lift for our team. So I'm really happy for her and happy that she's healthy. Yeah. Sony has been, <laughs> Sony has been like, uh, for me, like a breath of fresh air. Yes. Like all of all of the players are, are wonderful, but Sony, uh, as you know, I took in her cat um, <laughs> and just for her, a couple of weeks later to get a new kitten, mm. right? So I was ready to return them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Sony and I share, we have that love for uh, cats and animals. Mm. Uh, but she does, she holds a special place in my heart. And since I've been here, I've had the pleasure of meeting some wonderful people that you have recruited. <laughs> um, and I go back to when I first started here. Um, and I, I admit, I've never watched women's basketball. My very first game was March of 20, or April of 2011. Okay. And that was against Texas A&M? Yes. Whew! Yes, one for Charlotte. Um, <laughs> that was my very first game. Mm. And... I didn't know who Coach McGraw was, had no idea Sky was this hometown hero. Yes. Um, but Dev is the one player that really, <laughs> Devereaux Peters was that one player in that game for me that was like, my gosh, what have I been missing? Like, I really enjoy watching her play. Yes. And ever since then, and, you know, when and all, Coach McGraw hired me. And I love it. Yeah. Like, and I've watched you be a, a phenomenal recruiter. Um, and I look at all of the women, uh, young ladies you recruited. And I wanted to just touch on that a little bit. Um, from Sky to Jewel, mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay, Kay, I, I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm missing some people. <laughs> but can you talk a little bit about your role, even as a recruiter? Uh, I know you're a head coach now. Don't take away from that at all, but I love seeing you over the years recruit. Well, being a part of this program, you know, I always felt like I just wanted to bring in the best, and I realized as a player what it, the type of player that can succeed here at Notre Dame just yeah. by experiencing it, playing in the system, playing under Coach McGraw, and just knowing the landscape of Notre Dame. And so as a recruiter, like, I was always super passionate about bringing in the right fit, yeah. you know, bringing in players that could help um, – our tradition of success. You know, I love this place. Um, everybody understands and knows that I've been here for a very long time. And so the people that I bring in as a recruiter, like I was really, I took that personally. Like yeah. I wanted to make sure that I was bringing in the right players that I felt like that would thrive in the system and also would thrive under Coach McGraw and it's kind of how, like, how I am now as a head coach, but just yeah. bringing in the right people because I, I know what it takes and I've been in all those type of conversations and I've been a player and an assistant and a head coach. So, I know exactly yeah. what it takes and 
who can thrive here and who can help us succeed. And ultimately, I just want the program to continue to be positive and continue to succeed because it changed my life. You know, I'm, I'm walking proof of what this place can do for you. Um, and I just want to continue that. And when you bring in the right people, the right talent and the right fit, that's what make this place. What, that's what makes this place so special. Yeah. I've always, even for me, I take recruiting visits. Like those, those are the best you for me. Great job. I, I love like just engaging even with the parents, right? Yes. Because it's not just the student athlete that you're going to get. It's right. the parents, it's the family. family. Yeah. yeah. So I love just having that um, time to spend with them. I, I love it. I love every part of my non-basketball job, you know, because the court stuff is beyond me outside hollering for a three-point shot or <laughs> rebound or something like that. Um, I love the other stuff, you know. And so recruiting, I know, is special, mm. which brings me to our freshman, Hannah. Yes. She is a phenomenal player. Like, mm -hmm. even as a freshman, right, mm -hmm. you still see – um, the areas where she needs to grow right. and what she continue to learn. But I'm very impressed on her play. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at all of like the freshman of the week or the freshman, yeah, freshman of the week for ACC. I think it was another national AP player of the week. Mm -hmm. All of her accolades at this point is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing about Hannah that you can share that you love the most, what would that be? Mm, I would say her humility. Um, you know, she's a f fantastic player, super competitive. She's fiery. I love that part of her, her passion for the game and her swag and her fearlessness. But I just love that she's humble. She's um, her, her, her humility um, and that she's just so, um, she's a devout Christian. Yeah. And she talks about it all the time. Her faith is so strong the foundation from her family. I think that's what makes her so special yeah. because she realizes like this is just a game and she's just out here having fun and she just yeah. loves it and she just happens to be really good at it. But her faith is what I feel like I love the most about her. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. Mm -hmm. Having an opportunity on several occasions to attend church. Yes. Um, where Hannah attends church and just to even see her excitement in church mm -hmm. Uh it's just, you don't see that a lot. No. Right? Everything else is important to a lot of people, but you know that her relationship with Christ, her um, de being a devout Christian is important to her. Mm -hmm. She understands. Like, she's very mature beyond yeah. her years. Um, you listen to her. She's very wise to yeah. be someone so young. And for her just to understand, like, she just out here having fun. Like this is yeah. just part of this is the game that's provided her a lot of opportunities, but she knows um who she is and like you said, you know, she's a devout Christian and mm -hmm. um her faith in God and her relationship with God is number one for her. And I just I think that's special. Yeah. I was and she's comfortable in her own skin in that yeah. way. Oh a, a whole lot. I was talking to her about our upcoming games. Mm -hmm. Um Virginia, you're gonna help me out with this. Wake Forest. For there we go. <laughs> Syracuse coming Syracuse up. Syracuse coming, and then UConn. Yes. So some of the things that she was, she was very excited. Um, we talked a little bit about the UConn environment. Yes. Then you guys are going there. Um, speak on a little bit of your upcoming opponents. Mm -hmm. Well, just I would first like to say thank you to the fans. Um, they supported us. We had a three-game homestand, and that was amazing. Yes. Um, you know, unfortunately, we went two and one, but I felt like our the energy was great. You know, we almost had a sold out game last Sunday and mm -hmm. they show up regardless. It's pretty cold here right now and they're still showing up, <laughs> you know, yeah. always. They they love on our team. They love on our on our um, women and you know, in a way that's just so supportive. And I, I just love that. I just love seeing new faces in the stands and just mm -hmm. the energy that they bring us. And our, I mean, our, my team plays for them. And I just I think that's really special in our Notre Dame community. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then upcoming now we're on the road. So we have two game road trip, um, Virginia first, Char Charlottesville first, and then we're staying out and um, driving down to Winston-Salem for Wake Forest. And that's okay. going to be every game in the ACC is going to be tough. Uh, we understand that. And we're just going to try to go 2-0, take, take it one one game at a time and then focus on one a home game versus Syracuse um, game, you know, back at home next Thursday and then headed to Storrs, Connecticut for UConn, which will be one of the, you know, great rivalry for yeah. women's basketball. So excited for all four games. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking on UConn, I remember there's several games that I remember vividly, and I hadn't started too long, and there was like a multiple overtime game. Yes, at home. Mm-hmm. Like I remember that, and I remember like came out just excitement. The crowd was nuts. Um, <laughs> what is one of your favorite memories? <laughs> Of us playing UConn, I would say all the wins um, are my favorite memories. Yes, but one in particular, obviously, me playing um, here. It was January fifteenth, actually, oh, wow. a long time ago. Today, um, it was our first time beating UConn at home. It was our first sellout game, January fifteenth, two thousand and one. So that was the first time we've ever beaten UConn. First sold out mm-hmm. game, and it was, it was just magical. Is the only word I can explain. Um, we were so locked in. It was like from the jump, from the tip, that game, it was it was just unreal. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the moment where we went up. You know, I got a steal at the top of the key, went full court, and I was like, this game is over in my mind just because yeah. I was like, it was just one of those moments where you prepare so much to take down the Giant yeah. for so many years, and it's it's never we've never accomplished it. And then to have that momentum, to have the crowd, and to experience that just propelled our season, and that was the year we won. But – that's the that's the one game for me that I just I'll never I'll never forget that moment. It was it was it was such an incredible a moment and in adrenaline for the program and for myself and the team and for us to feel like that was like that that was it that was that step for us yeah. to really we needed to get over that hump and just to to have that experience and share that with our home crowd was pretty special. Long time ago, but it was <laughs> it was January fifteenth. I'll never forget that. Speaking on that, today is the 15th, as yes. you said, which is MLK Day. Mm-hmm. Um, what does this day mean to you? Yeah, I mean, just it's always a day of reflection um, of, you know, Martin Luther King and, and how powerful he was as a leader, um, you know, civil rights movement, but also just to see how far we've come. And um, it's just, a like I said, it's just a day of reflection. He's someone that has just changed the trajectory of our history and what he's done for African Americans and and the progress of African Americans and still we're still we're still progressing. Yeah. You know, obviously there's still a lot of work to do, but to just the civil rights movement and what he did for the civil rights movement is just it's yeah. just really powerful and it's always a day that I love just to go back and watch movies and reflect and listen to his speeches and and um and how um strong his messaging of um equality was um and what he what he did for history. Yeah. So it's just a it's just a special day. It it really is. How does this day, or how do you share with the team and to kind of get them to understand the importance of this day? Yeah, when we did the um, our city city bank classic in D.C., we went. We had the opportunity um, to go to his t- statue um, mm-hmm. there, and so like that was a moment of reflection. Yeah. The whole weekend, you know, um, going to the African American um, Civil Rights Museum, I thought that was really powerful powerful for them to kind of experience that. Um, we're off today, unfortunately, um, but I feel like it's never just today. I think it's it's always, you know, we're always trying to find ways to connect with the community. Um, if there's anything that I can bring the team speakers or take them places where they can reflect or, um, you know, be a part of something positive, a part, a part of change or learning about change, I try to do that. And we've done a couple really special things on campus um, especially COVID year. Okay. Um, and, you know, I have, a, I have a team that is all about giving back and um, and fighting for and fighting for just equality and rights and using their platform for good. So any moment I can, I'm trying yeah. to do that, not just today, because I think it's something that sh- shouldn't be celebrated in one day. It's something that you should do all year long. Well, Coach Ivy, thank you so much for sharing. Yes. And we want to continue to represent and MLK, yes. not just on this day, but throughout the year. Yes. Um, and so that's going to wrap up your segment. Thank We're you. We're going to come back with Maddie Westbell, um, who's such a special player. We're excited to have her. Thank you. All right, Coach Ivy, we're excited, and I know you are, but us as fans – Excited to have Maddie back. Yes. Um, she had a 15-15 game, 15 mm-hmm. points, 15 rebounds against Boston College. Mm-hmm. Um, how has the game changed since she has come back? I mean, she's a difference maker. Um, her presence, her swag, her toughness, her experience. I mean, we're a different team. We're a different team without her, and we're a different team with her. So 
so excited, so happy yes. that she's back. Um, I, I feel like she's had, she's always been um, just the way that she approaches the game, just a ultimate professional. Um, she's gotten better every year. Um, she knows my system. Um, the last game was her 100th start, so congratulations. Thanks. Um, but um, just somebody that plays with so much heart. She knows the program, um, you know, and she loves her teammates. She does whatever she can to, to help us win. Um, the ultimate teammate, but the ultimate competitor. So it was a breath of fresh air, like you mentioned yeah. earlier, with Sony, you know, having her back and what she does to this team. Sometimes it doesn't Sometimes it doesn't have to be a 15 and 15 night. You know, yeah. it, it it's her presence. It's her toughness. Um, she's in there battling with a mask on her face, grabbing rebos over three to four people, every possession. Um, it's the way she practices, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why she's so special and just so happy for that she's back. Yeah. Maddie, you, you're locked in. I watched you last night and or yesterday. You were very locked in. And I know it's frustrating <laughs> with that mask. I remember when Jackie Young had to wear the mask and there were several games where she just like threw it off. So mad. And Ann, our athletic trainer, grabbed it and waited to another time out, put it back <laughs> on her face. Um, you're so like that. What helps you to stay focused? Even during the game, even outside the game. Like what helps you to stay focused? To um, stay locked in? Well, honestly, that's always been something that I've been like trying to work on, trying to focus on is focus. And so I think off the court, um, just trying to stay mindful. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I do a lot of exercises with that. Yeah. Um, and so in the morning, I try to stay consistent um, in my routine, stay consistent in everything. So I'll get up and I'll meditate and I'll just kind of allow myself to focus. And then I think throughout the day that just kind of carries on, carries on to the court. Um, and then just trying to be present in the moment. So, like, when I get to practice, I'm fully there at practice. Um, and that's something that the coaching staff has always said. Like, when you go, just kind of forget everything else that's going on. So that's what I try to do for practice and then for games and just kind of keep it at that. I always – compare you to your sister and, and not not in a bad way not to be like oh cat did this but there's so many similarities sometimes when I watch you on the court how do you see your sister in you like it what qualities that your sister carry that you have yeah yeah I've definitely been compared to her my whole life um which like sorry <laughs> no that's such a compliment like she is somebody that I've always, always looked up to. Like, since I was a baby, I've wanted to be like my sister. Mm -hmm. um, and her leadership and her just, like, she's about her business all the time she she was. Um, and seeing the way, like, she was a champion. She's al She always has been. And seeing her actually do that in every level, every stage of her life, she's accomplished so much. Um and so I would like to just think that I have um, kind of accumulated some of her just drive and mm -hmm. champion mentality and just trying to be the best that she can be. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Coach Ivy, for you, Maddie came in, I believe, when you came in as a head coach. Mm -hmm. How has she grown from 20... 21 or yeah 2021 2021 when the two of you came in yeah i would like to go back to the first time i met maddie okay <laughs> um cat, cat was at it was like a state championship game the coach McGraw and i was there and i'll never forget she was kind of sitting behind us uh -huh. you know and obviously we can't talk to family and i looked up first of all they're they are identical so they look alike <laughs> But she was like, I want I want my sister to go to Notre Dame. <laughs> like so she told us from behind. So me and me and Coach McGraw was like, Well, we got you know, we got an in, we have an in here. I'll never forget that. She was like, Well, I don't know what she's doing. I want my sister to go to Notre Dame. And then like the you know, Kat's unofficial visit, you know, Maddie yeah. being there. So I've mm -hmm. watched her grow up, you know, as an assistant, but watching her. And yeah. so it was an honor for me to be able to take over this program, but but also my first year to be with her, you yeah. know, and um, just her trust of me and believing in my vision because, I mean, it's definitely different when um, the powers are transferred over, you know, with yeah. Coach McGraw and me taking over. So um, I've always been appreciative and grateful for her and our relationship because, again, I've known her since she was a baby. 
Um, but it's it's been amazing. It's been amazing. We always talk about like how we both came in together. Um, and I always felt like she was a winner. Um, she definitely has a lot of cat in her. Um, but also I thought that, you know, like her drive and um, she's she had a college body right when she came in as a freshman. And the things that she can do is just yeah. just un unbelievable. But I thought she was an even better person. Um, you know, like she talked about having maturity to understand and know how to meditate and to focus and what she does. Like she's very intentional with everything that she does. That's her workouts, the way she eats. Everything is very intentional. So having somebody very mature in that way um, that has that drive to be the best, um, that is just the ultimate person is exactly who you would want to come in with. And we've grown together. We've matured together. And like I said, I'm like, I'm so, I love her so much, but I'm just so grateful for her believing in in the vision of of what of the new era um, because we've both seen it from a long time ago um, and it's just been awesome. It's awesome to see how how much she's grown. It's awesome to see uh, where she's at right now, her senior year, and what she's doing for the program. And I always felt like she just gotten better every year, yeah. and she's hungry to get better. That's the one yeah. thing I love about her is like it's film. It's like, coach, what can I do to get better? How can I help the team? And you know, I feel like she's really gotten better with her leadership. And I think that's just with experience, knowing what each team needs. Because honestly, every team has been different. Her every year has been a different team. Mm -hmm. Bringing in transfers, <laughs> you know, having um, Olivia run run our team her freshman year, early enrollee, and having Dara, having you know, there's so many different dynamics yeah. that have happened in the last couple of years. And so that's a change of leadership every year. And mm -hmm. I think she's done a phenomenal job of um, being a consistent leader for us and learning how to lead. Because it's not something that you you have to learn how to lead, mm. you know, with a different team every year. And what is this team needs that's different from the year before? You know, like we're always, we're a different team from September yeah. than we are right now. So I think she's done a phenomenal job of tapping into that and doing whatever it takes. And um, she's just a phenomenal person. And I'm yeah. just, I'm lucky. We all are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we all are lucky. If you can just describe Maddie with using one word, what word would that be? special um on and off the court you know she obviously shows you all her talents on the court the things that she can do um the things that she does like you know her versatility and being a presence on the perimeter inside but also just a special person so i was i would say special she is a special person well thank you coach ivy You're welcome next we're going to have olivia mouse join us yes with the maddie west bell so the we get best. to talk to the two of them thank the you the best duo ever <laughs> yes <laughs> Welcome, me, Olivia. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Come on, come on. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome, Olivia Mouse, our Hi. point guard for Notre Dame women's basketball. She's joining us with Maddie Westbell. And speaking of our Yeti coldest moment of the week, we believe it's the weather. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you say that? You agree with me with that one? It's the weather. Yes. Um, we know these last few days have been really cold and brutal, uh, just to say the least, with some snow added in there. For yesterday's game against Miami, to see our fans in the stands that came out, they endured that weather, uh, what does that mean to you? Um, so, um, it's, it's incredible. You know, I've always commended the Notre Dame fan base for the way that they support us. Um, there's this one fan in particular who literally goes to every single one of our games, whether it's home or away. Um, and it's just, you know, the dedication, the commitment – um, and, you know, negative whatever degree weather, they still show up and show out and support us in, you know, the tough ACC conference that we play in every, you know, Thursday and Sunday. So um, we need their support. It goes the longest way, and we're so grateful for them. I think it speaks to just the community that we have here. Like, the fan base is our family. Um, and like I said, in the post game or something – uh, recently like we take that personal we just had that conversation like after a loss especially at home like we take that personal because we play for our fans and we play for 
uh, the banners in the arena. Like it's a it's a big community of people that we um, play for and support. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's everything that they come out even in weather like this to yeah. the, to see us play and just cheer us on regardless. So I remember you saying that it was at the day after the North Carolina game, mm -hmm. and I saw you and. Of course, we know you didn't play that game, and you were. I spoke, and you were like, "I'm so mad," and I was like, "Man, what's wrong?" And you was like, "I didn't want us to lose like that when our fans coming out." So I remember you saying that, and I know how passionate you is about our community and doing things for our fans in our community, mm -hmm. and kind of speaking on community. You guys did a lot of community service, um, even throughout the year. But especially during Christmas break, can you talk a little bit about some of the community service events? Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We um, we had the opportunity to open the gates of our home to 200 plus kids in the community um, for free. And I think that was one of the first times that we had done that. And it was just incredible to be able to do that because we don't usually open the door to to anybody in the community um and for some of these kids especially like they some of them have never even heard of Notre Dame and or it seems like such a far reach um to even be brought to campus or to even think that it's a possibility for them to come and so to be able to for us to reach out um, invite them to campus and host a, it was a two hour clinic. And even just that time, like it, we ran them through drills and that was cool, but just to get to talk to them, to listen, to allow them to ask us questions. Um, and it was just the men and women's basketball who were the coaches and obviously with the help of so many other people, but, um, just to give us the opportunity to give back and just, uh, like I said, opened the door to them. Um, it meant everything to us and everything to them. Liv, any? Um, this wasn't during Christmas break, but it was when we were in Paris and we did the little Under Armour clinic for the kids. That was kind of a highlight for me. Um, <clears throat> seeing all those kids just so excited to be around us and the two teams, you know, before we hit the court, kind of like bond over, you know, our love for basketball and, and love for helping people. So. That was definitely a highlight, um, and and as well as as the clinic, of course, that was that was fun to see so many kids who you know we see at our games regularly too, and ask for pictures after the game and autographs and stuff. It was just so cool to see them um, in a more intimate space with us, yeah. um, and us able to you know make a real impact in their lives. Yeah, I I observe the way you guys interact with the kids, and it's it's refreshing to see. Um, that you want to do that and you want to kind of share who you are with the future. Um, so I commend you on that. Good job, guys. Liv, let's Thanks. talk a little bit about what's going on with you. So how is rehab? How is how's all of that going? The dying question that everyone wants, <laughs> <laughs> everyone in the South Bend community wants to know. Um, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm close to the end of my journey, which is I'm very grateful for. Um, there's been a lot of bumps, slot ups and downs, but I've, I've been grateful to have really good people around me to support me. Um, this is definitely not easy. Um, you know, watching your team play every single day without you is, is, it's very tough for me. Um, but you know, I find ways to lift myself up, whether that's, you know, talking to different people, um, you know, taking space to myself, uh, journaling, you know, what have it. So, um, it's been tough, but, but, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel and, and I see myself getting better every day. And, and, you know, Ann, our trainer, um, Jared has been massive help in this, our strength coach, just getting my, my legs working again. So, yeah, I've seen some stuff. I was challenged. You challenged me, uh, yesterday <laughs> on some one on one. <laughs> I know you ducked. You ducked. You I, I do it. absolutely not. Ann would not clear me <laughs> till like 2035, so. <laughs> You'll be long gone into your professional <laughs> career by then. <laughs> but we are, we're excited and we support you. We support Thank you. Uh, every step in this journey for you. Because um, I know it is tough. I know it is tough, but we we know you'll be back. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. Let's like, um, how is it on the bench when you're coaching? I feel like you coach a little coaching. bit now. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I found myself getting a little bit too wrapped up into it. Um, you know, I get a little emotional, a little rowdy out there, but you know, <laughs> I, I care about this program and I want us to, you know, to fight hard whenever we play and you know, it's just that added level of like I wish I could be out there. That's really driving me and and you know, I care about Coach Ivy and and like we were talking about before like um, you know, she, I know her system, Maddie knows her system. We know what she wants at the end of the day. So um it's just it's a different lens when you're looking at it so I feel like I can help better yeah when I'm not playing you know yeah so looking at our next I say four opponents four or five opponents which game Maddie are you most looking forward to um well I would say first and foremost Syracuse okay we owe that to them and then definitely UConn I'm excited to get back there um, we also owe it to them yeah. because last time we we went there, uh, we lost, and that was that was a tough loss. Um, so we definitely got we got a little <laughs> run of, of good games coming. Yeah. <laughs> those are back to back to man. Those are back to man. Those yeah, was it Syracuse fight. and then UConn. Yeah. That'll be a dog fight for sure. It's gonna be crazy. Eesh. I didn't realize that. <laughs> so Maddie, what's them. your plans for after Notre Dame? Have you thought about that at all? Um, Well, yeah, I've thought about it. I've also not allowed myself to kind of be in that space yet because I don't know what what I want to do. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Um, I have an extra year if I want it. Ah, that's right. And then I could just go pro. I that's the plan at the end of the day, get drafted, go to the league, play overseas. My sister keeps hollering at me to <laughs> to go play with their overseas so we've been wanting to do that for a long time um so that's always been a dream of mine but I do have an extra year if I want it so we'll, we shall see yeah what that looks like Liv what's your major I was I've always uh wondered what what's your major here like I feel like you <laughs> switched it did you switch did, your major okay I did um I'm majoring in political science right now okay yeah Love and it. You love it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you start out with? I started out in, uh, I think, neuroscience, something science-y. Okay. And then I took my first calculus class, and I was like, wow, Sorry. you're done. <laughs> and then at that point, you know, I'd always had a, an interest in business, but at that point, the way I came in early enrolling, um, I couldn't get into the business okay. school, just the way I came in. Yeah. And so I just have my minor in, in business econ, and then... Um, Next year, I'll take a grad program in business, so. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like how you, like, <laughs> you. right away, you were like, oh, yeah, this is not going to work. Yes. Let's switch this up real yes. quick. Yes. Uh, I spoke with Coach Ivy about today, the 15th of January being MLK Day. What does this day mean to the two of you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, being a person of color, it it's it's very important for us. You know, it's a, it's a major step in our history and our progress. Um, towards equality and you know I've always learned about MLK you know through my youth and and my high school years and and now in college Um, so it's very important um, for our community and you know it's a very important day of learning for everyone you know in the U.S. and and just honoring you know an important figure who who made a lot of progression in our society. Yeah Um, yeah I mean I'm coached by trailblazing black women um i'm i'm in the midst of history when it comes to that and i think it means everything for me and for the journey um just to embrace that and like coach said to reflect but also to keep it going um and so a day like today is is for reflection but it's also a reminder of like this is a continuous journey every single day. Um, and so just educating myself and educating um, the people around me, just, just wanting to learn and wanting to just continue to grow um, in that space. And yeah, it, it means everything. It's a continuous thing, just not today. Yeah. I appreciate that. One one last thing for Liv. <laughs> I had a conversation with, our women's soccer coach here. <laughs> I actually ran into him the other day. Did you? Yes. Well, and okay. so we were talking, and I was just telling him, because he observed you one practice. You, 
I don't know. What do you call it when you're like <laughs> you juggle? <laughs> juggle. Yeah, okay, you, I was trying yeah. to say dribble, uh, but that that's <laughs> close. <not right>. close. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "Oh man, she like she's uh, a pretty good soccer player." Mm -hmm. So I, I asked him. I was like, "If Olivia had the opportunity to play." soccer at least one game here like would you take her and he was absolutely. like absolutely <laughs> so he was like ask her would she play would you want to play 100 percent. no you questions would do it. asked no questions asked yes <laughs> i would play right away i miss it every day we should work on that we should we i talked to him about it too and i was like i don't know if, if coach ivy would let me but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like whenever you want he was like please come over I, I often like, oh. see you and Sony. I know. Sony and I talk about it kind of a lot, actually, when we go to um, watch them play and, and support them. We're like, we we want to do that. You know, we want to go out there one yeah. time and, and kind of play. You know, I played all up until my senior year of high school when, when COVID hit. So um, it's always been special. It was the first sport I ever played. So We had um, a women's basketball prayer, player that Brittany Ooh. Mallory, it wasn't Ooh. soccer, it was lacrosse. Okay. She played maybe, I don't know, three, do you call those matches or games? Coach McGraw let her let her play? She was done, yeah. She was, oh, we were, okay. basketball was over and it was like two or three. And I see. Play. I Absolutely see. didn't know what was going on, but I was out there supporting. <laughs> like, I would cheer yeah. for anybody, yeah. you know, but I would love to see that. Yeah. But thank you. Thank I know you. this is an off day for you guys, so I appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your time. Thank and you, Shar. Thanks, Shar. Good luck with these uh, row games. Thanks. All right, Thank you, Shar. All right, let's welcome Devereaux Peters. Now, we call her Dev, um, but I just gave your birth name just so people understand who I'm talking to. <laughs> Devereaux Peters to the show. Good morning, Dev. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. So good to have you on the show. I'm excited. I'm shocked you have me here, that you're allowing this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How has life been after Notre Dame? Um, it has been fun. It's been a lot of life, so I will say that. <laughs> um, a lot of life. <laughs> a lot of life. Obviously, seven years playing professional and doing a lot of stuff there has been exciting. And then now, kind of in the second half of my career, which has also been exciting, so... I'm doing pretty well. I'm not going to complain. It's been pretty good. It's been exciting seeing uh, you on the news here a little bit, um, seeing you kind of dibble-dabble into um, housing projects and uh, development of homes here. Can you talk a little bit about what you're working on with South Bend Housing? Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to be kind of back in South Bend in this manner. Um, so I'm a developer now, real estate developer, and my focus is mainly low income housing, but I do do some commercial and hopefully eventually some market rate as well. But, um, the first project that I have gotten funded in my, on my own is downtown South Bend. Um, it's a 66 unit apartment building that will be right across from the post office on Michigan and Monroe. And so I am just really excited to get this project going, um, we're going to be closing and starting construction sometime this year. And um, I'm just really excited to be pushing forward with that and also to have an opportunity to kind of give back to South Bend and um, kind of do something for them. As I feel they've kind of, the community has done a lot for me and my growth as a person. So it's exciting to kind of be able to hand um, some of that back and, and um, kind of just that gratefulness to give back to the community in that way. We're excited to have you back. Um, can you tell us a little bit how how has Notre Dame prepared you for your life um, beyond basketball? Man, in so many ways. <laughs> I honestly don't think this podcast is enough um, to kind of dive fully into that. But um, to be honest, the I, it really starts with, I would say, the relationships, you know, I've had at Notre Dame between the coaching staff, um, Honestly, the closest friends I have to this day, I all met while I was at Notre Dame. So um, just the relationships I have and kind of the career I've been able to build after basketball has been a direct relation to me going to Notre Dame, to be quite frank. Uh, a lot of the connections I made um, in development and kind of the ability to get as far as I did 
and to get this project going started with the relationships I had at Notre Dame. Um, that was one of the reasons I selected South Bend to start with my first project was because development requires a lot of personal relationships and you have to be able to build those out and have a good relationship with the community. And I felt I had that there, but also like I had to get connected with a council member. Um, the person that connected me with that council member was CO <laughs> in South Penn. So, um, you know, being able to connect with Niel or just, you know, being able to connect with the city and be able to say, um, send out an email with my alumni email address and for people to respond, like, I watched you when you were playing at Notre Dame. And that's why they were responding and I was able to get in those doors. So, you know, they say um, <clears throat> at Notre Dame is the, what, a four years for a 40 year commitment and it's like this huge network and that is not a lie you know there's a lot of connections there but just in in general um i'm grateful for those relationships because to be quite frank notre dame taught me how to be an adult a functional adult as well as much as they used to get on my nerves co and yo and coach mcgraw <laughs> when i was playing a lot of those things translated you know the things they would get on me about and yell at me about and be nagging me about that I didn't want to hear when I was in college. Uh, they were relevant to how you function as an adult and how I functioned, you know, even as a professional basketball player, all of that translated for me um, and the way they taught you the game, the way they taught you to play, the way they taught you how to be, a, you know, caring and responsible human being, all of that came from my time at Notre Dame. So um, it has been huge in me being able to be successful past graduation, which is mm -hmm. awesome. You spoke about relationships, and I know that you have a special relationship with Sherelle. Um, and we're excited just having Sherelle on staff. But could you speak a little bit about you and Sherelle and um, how that your relationship with her um, advanced and how did you guys keep that going? So to be completely honest, I was Sherelle's freshie. So I was the freshman coming in, Sherelle was a senior. And uh, Sherelle couldn't stand me when I got there. I was very annoying. <laughs> I, was the annoying I was the annoying freshman. She used to bully me, but I didn't have any other friends. So it like, <laughs> I just kept coming and harassing her because I didn't have anybody else to talk to or hang out with. So I was like the nagging little sister and she was the annoying, the annoyed big sister. Uh, but that was our, our relationship um, initially because, you know, it just didn't have nothing to do. So I would go harass Sherelle and find out what she was doing and where she's going and <laughs> how could I come? And <laughs> so I used to get on her nerves. But, um, you know, from there, we kind of just, because I was wouldn't go away and I was just a gnat, that <laughs> eventually we grew and built this really strong relationship. And once she got to the league, uh, I would go to her games when she would come to Chicago and come visit. And we've always remained very close and in contact throughout the time. And uh, so when she came back, I was hyped. Um, when she even had the conversation um, about, cause I think initially she was part of the first round when you all hired Marina. I think she was part of, she oh, interviewed Michaela. for that. Yeah, I'm mean, sorry, Michaela. Yes. Yeah, when she, uh, when you guys hired Michaela. Yeah. So, you know, talking her through that process was exciting. And, you know, even when she didn't get it, we were still in touch. And um, I came and visited her out in Cali. Um, and so when the opportunity came up again, I was like, listen, this is your time. Let's do this. <laughs> you got to come back. Um, so I'm really excited to have her back in her name. But, you know, that just speaks to the community that we have and kind of how, you know, we hold each other up and, and kind of keep each other in the circle. So. Yeah, and Sherelle has that. The relationship you had with her as a player, she has that with Hannah, right? Mm -hmm. If you see Hannah, Sherelle is somewhere around. Um, <laughs> how important do you think that is, like for a player to have that sort of relationship with their coach, position coach, um, I'd especially think, as a uh... freshman? Yeah, especially as a freshman. I think it's huge, you know. Um, I think that, you know, playing at the college level is difficult. It's hard. You got class you got to worry about. 
you you trying to have a life and social life and be out and hang out with friends and, and meet new people, but then at the same time, trying to keep up with school. It's a lot to juggle. It's a lot. It's a big transition. Um, and so to have that relationship and have kind of someone in your corner, someone you know you can count on, especially when you're away from home, um, is very helpful. And I think it really helps you as a player to have honestly a, a more successful career. Um, I know when I was playing, there were times where, you know, you may not feel like it or may not feel like doing something, but there were plenty of times our team was playing for the coaches, you know, like we were playing and out there ready to ride for coach McGraw. Cause somebody said something crazy in the paper or like, you know, ready to ride for the L or whatever. And just always having that relationship where, you know, you have someone to go to when you're not having a good day or you're having a bad game or you're having a wrong stretch or your shot is off or, you you know, like whenever you need somebody, it's, it's always nice to have a coach, yeah. you know, honestly, to go to um, because they're the ones that are going to be completely honest with you and real with you and get you through those times. So having those relationships to me is huge. Um, I've always had that. And I know that's not always the case. I've been very lucky to have those relationships that kind of throughout my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's extremely helpful because it just helps you push through this, you know, chaos that can be college at times and, and figuring it out. And especially now, you know, they're so visible and, you know, with social media now, the way it is and the NIL and everything else, there's a lot that they have to navigate at a very, very young age. Yeah. So I think even more so now it's even more important to have those strong relationships while you're figuring all of that stuff out, because it's hard to figure out when you're still trying to figure out yourself at the same time, you know? Yep. So that's huge. I, I think that's something, though, that, you know, Notre Dame, Notre Dame prides itself on is trying to build out those relationships with the players. And I think you see it in how many players come back, you know, to games and big games. You just see huge amounts of alumni come back each year and for big games because of that connection. And it starts with that coaching and player connection. That's so true. We're going to take a pause here, Deb. Don't go anywhere. We have some questions that we're asked. Um, but let's take a pause. Let's take a break. All right. Welcome, Dev. We welcome you back. Um, this is going to be our From the Irish Question presented by TireRack.com. All right. So we are asked fans to submit a question uh, for you. And we have one that we selected. All right. This question is for you, Deb. It comes from... Patrick out of Chicago, Illinois. Deb, not sure if you know this, but did you know you are the only college player to ever block Brittany Griner? There's a video of it on YouTube. You blocked her at Baylor your fifth year. Is that true? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, You know what? College, I may be the only college player, actually. I'm that, I know professionally other players have blocked her, but maybe college. I know for for a fact I was the first. I do know that. <laughs> we lost that game, though. <laughs> but I was the first. <laughs> That's Listen, that was one of the moments for me watching you was the block shots and then the stare down you would give the players after you blocked their shot. Like, that was like, oh, my gosh, I love that. Um I did have one more. So what was or what is one of your fondest moments on the court uh, while you was a student at Notre Dame? Uh, Easily the first time we beat UConn in the Final Four. And my senior year, that was because we just had lost so many times and been embarrassed so many times. (laughs) There were so many horrible games against UConn that that first time we beat them was it was just like there's nothing to explain that moment and how much work it took to get to that point you know and to finally like get there and and especially at the final four too that was by far the the best moment the by far it's not even close because it just it took so much they were so good it was just so hard to beat them yeah that to finally obtain that goal was just like all right we, we might be doing something here. <laughs> like, I think if I was to ask that of all of our coaches, they would say that, especially Coach McGraw. <laughs> absolutely, Coach McGraw. You know that. I mean, every single time we beat them, it's her favorite. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, 
Well, thank you so much, Dev. We appreciate you taking your time out to be with us and good luck. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you. You know, I'm always around. I'll be back. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Wake Up the Echoes presented by TireRack.com. So excited to have been a part of this episode, but we look forward to you joining us next week when Tony is back. Thank you so much.